Hello everyone and happy holidays! This is Lachlan Howard from Music Tomorrow out of Central Ohio bringing you the news about theme parks and roller coasters around the world each week. This past week was full of new information regarding many amusement park projects all over the world. I will be touching on news regarding Plopsa Land, Islands of Adventure, Indiana Beach, and a few other parks. To be filled in on all the weekly news about amusement and theme parks this week, stay tuned. But before I get into it, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the notification bell if you enjoy this recap, because there will be an update video weekly. For day-by-day -day updates, you can follow my Instagram, at Amusement Tomorrow, and check my daily stories, as well as like the photography posts you will see on my profile. You can also DM me on there if you have any questions or would like me to further elaborate on a topic. With that, let's begin. Velocicoaster, Islands of Adventure Velocicoaster at the legendary Universal Islands of Adventure theme park in Orlando had two major updates this week. Further concept art regarding the trains of the coaster have been released. The art gives off a better understanding of the details on the train, but nothing really super new, because we already knew that the trains would feature LED lights, the new Intamin lap bar restraint system, as well as onboard audio in the headrests, which are all presented in a modern rugged design. What I picked up was that the train design was fully revealed so that they could begin daytime testing. Daytime testing is something that happens quietly for most parks, but because Islands of Adventure is year-round and Velocicoaster is a gigantic ride that stands out throughout the park, the runs are not going to go unnoticed. Many enthusiasts have taken great footage of these rides, and the footage will be linked below. The test runs contradict some of the early nighttime tests that took place a few weeks ago in which people were claiming the ride had pacing issues, even though those early tests were purposefully slowed. Now, I personally could not help but roll my eyes heavily at these comments because even though I have not been an enthusiast for too long, I remember every false rumor about Steel Vengeance's pacing issues, and I know that it is the same here because Velocicoaster looks fantastic, and when it starts to really get going, it will be an elite ride at an elite park. Sujo Forest Hurricane Coaster and Plopsa Land Time Traveler. Now, I'm going to be talking about Matt coasters for a lot of the video but these two in particular have had major construction milestones recently. First, the new Mac launched hypercoaster named Hurricane Coaster coming to Suzhou Forest World in China. Besides this concept POV and a few photos, there is not much to discuss because coasters in China seem to never get the attention they deserve, but they always look awesome. This should be a very interesting ride because I would compare it to Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm in the first element in height, but this ride is by Mac and not Intamin. Accelerator uses a hydraulic launching system, while all Mac launch coasters use LSMs. LSM launch systems are notoriously not intense, especially when produced by Mac. Mac uses their launches not really as an element, but just as a way to get up to speed, not really focusing on any intense forces, which is the main focus for the similar Intamin Accelerator model. This layout looks amazing so far, and the Cobra Roll will be very interesting to see, because it is massive and I don't believe Mac has done a Cobra Roll yet. Track work is over halfway done now, and I cannot wait to see a real POV, or at least just a little more coverage when it comes out. Second, I am going to quickly touch on the new for 2021 Extreme Spinning Coaster, also by Mac, Time Traveler, coming to Plopsa Land in Belgium. This ride shares a name and model with the now iconic Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, but this new one has a more intriguing layout. I can't really say if it will be better or not, but it will at least be as good because this layout is wild. I will link the full concept POV in the description so you can check it out fully for yourself, but this will be a great ride. If you really would like my full in-depth thoughts or opinions on either new Mac coaster, or just want some information on a topic in general, send me a DM on my Instagram page. Crumpus Water Coaster. This will be quick as there is not much to talk about. The new Krumpus themed water coaster coming to Niglo Land in France had a new piece of concept art released. I do not speak French, so I do not know a ton of the fine print details about this coaster in the announcement video, except that this concept art is hysterically exaggerated. This theme is a very interesting one, and if executed well, will be very nice. But I would advise not to expect what you see here in this concept art, because construction photos show that the ride will be more tame than what the park is showing off. The layout depicted in this concept POV really tells how much they need to dial it back in the concept art, because the art shows stuff that is just not going to happen, especially considering that this is a relatively small investment. 
Again, there is currently not really much information to know about this ride, but I will of course update you on any future relevant information when it comes out. SeaWorld Australia, the new Atlantis. This announcement as a whole seems a little underrated, but probably just because it is in Australia. This new themed land for SeaWorld Australia near the Gold Coast will feature Vortex, a topspin ride, hopefully and expectedly to have water effects, Trident, a tall Starflyer swing ride, and the headlining attraction will be Leviathan, a brand new large-scale wooden roller coaster from the Gravity Group. To me, this is very interesting because we just saw SeaWorld work with GCI at San Antonio with Texas Stingray, but they are moving on with Gravity Group for what I would say is an equally thrilling layout. The train will also feature a backwards rear car for what will most likely be an upcharged price. Leviathan looks great and will be a perfect complementing attraction for the park's current and future lineup. My last thing I would like to add is that this coaster might also have the best front car design of any roller coaster train. Gravity Group is known to excel when it comes to train designs, but this looks like their best. The head of the sea monster is so detailed and will look absolutely great roaring across the wooden elements. These new attractions are scheduled to open in just a few days on December 20th, 2020, but I have no way of knowing for sure that that date is correct, so we will see. Kings Island Camp Cedar Here is something I have been waiting for for a while now, as Kings Island is my home park. Kings Island really needed something like this. Camp Cedar will be a luxury outdoor resort with luxury cabins furnished trendily on the inside and outside as well as places to park RVs and trailers. There will be a small pool area and this will be located as a whole less than a mile from the park. While Great Wolf Lodge has served as the main hotel for the park for basically ever, it seems the park is really trying to become a destination. This announcement hints that the park will not slow down its current rapid growth. Kings Island really appeals to the pass holder, adding new things every year. But with this new resort, the park is moving into a place more enjoyable as a whole for out-of-town guests because these cabins will be much nicer than the Great Wolf Lodge. Note that Kings Island will not own this resort directly, but the park will be the only thing drawing guests in and it will be jointly run between the park and the hotel group that owns it, which I could not find. Now, there is another thing that I can't find, which to me is pretty necessary, and that is that I cannot find any indication of a shuttle service between the resort and the front gates of Kings Island and Soak City, which would be a very odd thing if it does not actually have one. Being close to the park is like the whole point, so not having a shuttle service to and fro would be pretty terrible for the park and the guests. I will update you on that if it comes up. Camp Cedar will open in the spring of 2021. Primeval World Deconstruction this is my first news video and I don't even want to try to compete with Disney Parks news channels, but I would like to touch on this photo of the Primeval World trains leaving the Disney World property. Any roller coaster or ride to be added to a Disney park becomes iconic quickly, and this charmingly themed Spinning Wild Mouse by Zamperla is no exception. Primeval World was arguably the headlining attraction at Dinoland USA in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, if you know me, you know that I am a gigantic Disney Park fan. So when an attraction closes, it hits extra hard. But that is not the case for this ride. When it officially closed a few months ago, I was not upset, as I never really loved the coaster, even though it is my favorite Wild Mouse theming. But when I went back and thought about it, I think this hints to the direction the park will be going with regards to the unfortunately out of place Dinoland USA. When there is a development, I will touch again because all I could say right now would be rumors or what I personally think would be best. So take from this photo what you want. I'm just here to let you know that it does not look great for Dinoland USA. Six Flags Over Texas, Aquaman Power Wave. Another quick topic will be that of Aquaman Power Wave coming to Six Flags Over Texas being pushed back to a 2022 opening date. Now there is little information because the story is brand new. But if it is interesting, I will let you know in the future. I do not really think it will be though. Six Flags is probably just waiting to recover a little more so they can afford to operate this expensive ride how it should be operating. It is unfortunate that parks will have to push back their 2020 attractions, but not surprising because the COVID-19 pandemic really screwed up park plans and this ride is just another example of that. 
I think that we will see parks doing this more and more often throughout the winter, as we have already seen the SeaWorld chain do the same, but push back to a 2021 opening date. This Mac Power Splash will be a great fit for the park. They need a new large scale ride, and a water ride never hurts a park with a summer climate as hot as Texas. Indiana Beach, Camara. At the end of last week, restructuring plans for the La Feria Amusement Park in Mexico had been released, and just over a week earlier, Indiana Beach announced their new coaster to be Camara, which formerly operated at La Feria and had been for sale for a while. This coaster would have been a big loss if it was destroyed, because it looks to be a great ride with an unfortunate recent history, which you can research if you want to, but I will not be covering. La Feria also had a now rare Schwarzkopf shuttle loop that is currently rumored to be coming to Indiana Beach in 2022, but my main point is that the Camara roller coaster has officially started transportation to its new home. It is good to see that the ride is saved, but also it's pretty surprising. Gene Staples acquired Indiana Beach at the beginning of 2020 and was thought to not really be a man focused on adding new thrilling roller coasters. But he must have realized that coasters bring in people because now he is rumored to be adding two within two years and confirmed to be at least adding one. I will be keeping up with the construction of this ride quite loosely, but you can check out guaranteed updates on my Instagram story when they are released as long with other not really super notable updates that I have already touched on. Alright guys, that's going to be the end of it for this week. Even with the stagnant coaster world right now, parks all over the world are still expanding and I am here to report. Check back in next week for future updates on who knows what. Only tomorrow will tell. Thank you so much for watching and just for good measure, like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow my roller coaster based Instagram at Amusement Tomorrow and my personal Instagram at Lachlan Howard. Have a great rest of your day.